The Farm Up. Welcome. This is the podcast by Wake the Farm Up called Maintaining Ground. And I am your host, Andy the Elf. In this podcast experiment, I'll be talking with old friends, new friends, and a whole variety of people. Like this one is going to be pretty strange. Get ready. Pretty strange. Get ready. (laughs) So I hope you enjoy this experiment. Swell yeah! Welcome. Another strange podcast. Things are getting weird. So, today, we are going to start out talking with Gusta Dougal. You want to say hey, Gusta? Yeah, hi. So, Gusta, where are you involved in permaculture these days? Uh, I'm not so much anymore. What the actual fuck? <laughs> what happened? Well, I got hungry one day, and I went out into my garden, and I ate all the trees. I had trees and trees, and I just ate all of them. I just chewed them up like a beaver, but I didn't even, like, just chip them. I ate actually ate them. I chewed them up. I guess I needed some fiber. Wow. Very interesting, Gusta. So, when you ate all these trees, were they dormant or did they have leaves on them still? Well, I ate the leaves first. So, I had all the foliage and I chewed that up very meticulously before I put it into a, uh, you know, put myself chewing up this twigs, you know, and then I moved down to the trunks, and after that, I pulled the roots up and (laughs) ate them. Wow. Wow. (laughs) How many different species of trees do you think you had? Well, in my forest garden, I had over 62 species of trees, (laughs) and I ate all of them. (laughs) (laughs) And then after that, I went out to my zone four. So in permaculture, you have different zones. So zone one is right around my house. That I ate first. That was mostly foliage and herbs and smaller plants. And then I moved out to zone two. And in zone two, there was more berry bushes. I'll tell you, the thornless blackberries are very tasty. I learned that from my goats before I ate them. Wait, you ate your goats too? I'm telling you, I ate everything on the farm. So that's just what happens. I'm not too into permaculture anymore because I ate everything. Wow, so when did you eat the goats? Was that fairly early on? Well, I was always eating them and one of them When I ate it, I just ate its legs, and then I ate its the rest of it. Then I continued to eat the horns and the bones, everything, and I was so hungry that day that I ate all the hay. Okay, so what kind of hay was it? Was it pretty dry? Was it green still? Did it have any dust on it? You know, I know my goats, when they eat hay, a lot of times they eat some of it and then they drop a lot of it on the ground. How did that work for you? Well, I ate all of it. I was so hungry that I even picked up 
some of the manure that I was going to put onto the garden, right? Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. I, I do that. I clean up the manure, make piles, and put it around in the winter, make sure my trees are getting some good nutrients into them as the spring absorbs into its roots and they, you know, feeding the bacteria in the soil, feeding the microorganisms. Yes, that's right. So that's another problem I had. <laughs> I really liked the microorganisms so much that I ate them all. What the farm? Wow. You're serious, huh? You really ate all of them. Yes, I actually did. <laughs> so after I got out of zone two, I continued to eat. I went into my orchard, which is zone three, where I have some more of my grafted select varieties of fruit. So there I was able to eat plum trees. I ate them down to the ground. I had put garlic in them around the roots when they were at a young age so that it would keep the shrews, or the, the voles, the vote, the little, I think of shrews sometimes because they're shrewd and they get into there and they do rude <laughs> things. But I don't have to worry about them anymore because I ate them. I did, I ate them too. And they're gone. Nothing, I even ate their holes. Wait, you, you ate the voles holes that they had created. <laughs> yes, I scooped up every bit of hole and I ate it. Wait, how do you eat a hole? It's what whole foods is all about, right? It's just this big empty space of stuff and you eat it. So I was so hungry, that's what I had to do. Wow, Gusta Dougal, you are amazing. I will make sure that if you are hungry and you're coming over to my house, I will try to make sure I order a whole truckload of food to be here so you don't start eating all of my plants. Or I could put you onto some invasive plants. What do you think about that? Oh, I would eat all your invasive plants, but sometimes I'm just afraid that won't be enough. Just not quite enough. <laughs> Wow, so like 10 acres of bush honeysuckle and autumn olive and Japanese honeysuckle with multiflora rose. Mm. You know, 10 acres of that wouldn't be enough for you for one day? Well, maybe for two days, I guess. <laughs> but you can see how over time I got out to my zone four which had some more of my pecan trees and all this started happening. It just started happening and I just, I couldn't help it. I just had to eat it. I wanted to eat all of the trees. I even swallowed chestnuts whole. What? He even did that? What do you mean by chestnuts whole? Like you didn't even take them out of their shells? I didn't even take them out of their husk. You know that spiky husk? It tastes really good. It's better than any kind of hot sauce, the way in which it crunches into my throat. And then as I pass it out the next day and I make my own manure of all this, it looks beautiful. It almost looks like a molten lava sea urchin. I'm having a hard time picturing that. Can you describe to me what a molten lava sea urchin looks like? Well, if you would take a chestnut with its spikes and you would invert it so that the soft velvety inside is touching there and you can rub that around and then crush it with a small cluster of moldy grapes. No, seriously, what the? <laughs> no, the kind that have been smashed and they've got mold on them and the fruit flies are flying around them and then 
pack that together and then twist it up and shake it and then put a bunch of spikes coming out of it from a porcupine and then lay that onto the ground with a little bit of toilet paper and it'll look just exactly like it. Wait, so on your permaculture farm, you use toilet paper? Oh, of course I do. I've never been to a permaculture farm that doesn't use toilet paper. Wow, I've been to a few of them that don't use toilet paper. It's amazing, they use like shreds of old t-shirts and then they run it through a washing machine of some sort or they wash it themselves. And that way they're not wasting paper or trees. Well, that's what got me started to eat the trees. I took some of the toilet paper and I ate it and I said, wow, this is some really good fiber. <laughs> <laughs> so what made you, like, what makes you eat that much? Well, I really like food. It all started out when I was younger and I had an Instagram account and I would look at pictures of people's dinners and lunches and the sandwiches they would make with all these different layers and colors and the shininess of the sauces. And I would get so hungry that I would just have to go and eat something. So when I started developing more of a hunger, my permaculture farm was sustaining me for a while. What kind of things did you grow? Well, here in the Midwest, I was growing pawpaws and persimmons, and I even tried gummy berries, and I had all kinds of blackberries and raspberries. Uh, the blueberries, they didn't work so good, but when I went to eat them, I had them in zone one as well. So I started to eat them and they were really, really good. You should try to eat those bushes. Man, I don't know about this because you know what? I always try to keep other animals from eating my bushes, from eating my trees. So is there a way to keep you out of my garden? Well, it may be over time that I eat so much, I don't know. I don't know how to keep me out of your garden. Eventually, I'm going to be so hungry, I'm going to have to go there and eat it. Why? Why are you going to have to come to my gardens and my food forest and eat it? I'm trying to grow it. It produces plenty of food right now. I can make you a pie, or I could make you a smoothie or a salad. Yeah, I would eat all of that. I bet you would. So is there, you know, here's a good question just to take this somewhere else. What wouldn't you eat? Well, well, there's not much I wouldn't eat, but I have a hard time with metal and plastics. Uh, I have eaten tires before. If you get them on a warm day, they're a little softer and you can chew them up a little bit better. Wow, what kind of teeth do you have that you can chew into a tire? Well, I have really strong teeth from eating the trees. There's <laughs> so many trees that I eat. I, I love to eat dogwood trees. I love to eat the, the Cornish Florida, the Cornish Coosa. Uh, I love to it's eat poison uh, dogwoods, you know the ones with the really red stems, they're kind of like a little treat. I'll go through a whole wetland bug and just eat them mixed with button bush and it tastes so good. And maybe eat some hibiscus plant too, the one that I have the flower on them, I eat all of them. Make sure I chew them up and then they're gone in my belly and then I can I can do I, you know, I'll just go in the bathroom later and then it, it'll come out and it'll be like really small. It's really weird. I could eat four acres of a wetland in one day. I will chew up the elderberries and swamp oak and I will even digest the swamp roses and the 
What? Oh, so good. Those swamp roses. Those little hips on them are red and bright and really cheery. Yeah, I, I like to eat them, but again, I don't get why you're eating the whole bush. <laughs> well, of course I get really hungry, man. And that's just what I do. Well, it's wild though, Gusta, because you're not really that big. You know, you're not much bigger than me. What do you weigh? I weigh like 42. <laughs> yep, 42. <laughs> Wait, 42 what? 42. <laughs> Is that some kind of unit of measurement that we don't know because you obviously look like you weigh more than 42 pounds? Swell, yeah! Well... I guess it's a different system of measurement that I work with on my permaculture farm because when I started my permaculture farm, I wanted to separate myself from society. I didn't want to have to go to the grocery store, but things have gotten really bad. What do you mean they've gotten really bad? Like the state of the world that society affects you even though you're remotely removed from? From this whole situation? Well, no, just that it's got really bad. I've, like I said, I'm not so into permaculture anymore because I ate everything. Now I go to, I, I even went to the grocery store and I ate the whole store. You ate the whole store? Like all the food in the grocery store? No, like all the whole entire store. Even the store manager, they came out and they asked me to stop eating the ice machine when I first got there. And they had those little machines that you put quarters into, and they're full of gumballs and tattoos that you can put on temporarily. Yeah, I know about that. I've seen those before. Yeah, I was eating those, and the store manager came and tried to stop me. I tried to stop them from trying to stop me. I told them... Can, can I get a manager... I told him. What'd you tell him? I told him that I couldn't help it and that I was hungry. <laughs> so you just ate the whole entire store. Yep, it was during the fall. They had mums out on the front. They tasted really spicy. I didn't like them that much. I think there must be something in there that tries to keep me from eating them. But I was so hungry, I just ate them. Wow. So after you were done eating the grocery store, what was left? That was just a parking lot. <laughs> so I don't really like metal that much, but I will eat it. So I ate all the cars. And I'll tell you, my favorite kind of car, there was a couple of them there that were running on biodiesel. And that biodiesel kind of gives it like this big smacky sandwich of a flavor with all that oil in it. It's like <laughs> yummy, yummy, yum. wow. Yum, yum. Okay, I got it. What do you think about uh, electric vehicles? Those are spicy. They have a lot of <laughs> lithium in them and cadmium, which is really toxic for the earth. So I decided that maybe if I eat them, then it'll be better. <laughs> were people upset that you were eating their car? I mean, it sounds like even beyond eating your whole forest garden, which I thought was devastating in the first place, now you're eating people's cars. So you've definitely <laughs> left the realm of permaculture in the part where you're taking care of the community. Well, it's actually done a great service. Now the people aren't driving cars around. They're not using lithium or cadmium. They're not using oil. They're not charging their cars with coal. So they're, they started walking around. Some of them even had horses. But I got really hungry and I ate one of the horses. You <laughs> did. So that's, that's cool. I, I mean... I can see that, you know, being viable, eating a horse, way before eating a car. Yeah, 
They do taste pretty good. <laughs> but, I don't know. I'm just really hungry now. I might eat this podcast. <laughs> Wait, how are you going to eat this podcast? I'm just going to scoop it up and take a big bite. Chew it up. Spit it out. <laughs> Keep listening to this podcast, explore the other episodes, have fun, stay tuned, there'll be more coming from the Mother Farm and Elf.